Hi, and welcome to our learning platform. Today we are going to learn about USSD applications. Perhaps you've wondered how USSD works in the background, and in our session today we are going to dig deep into that. If this is your first time checking out our videos, remember to subscribe to help us grow our learning community. Let's dive in. USSD stands for Unstructured Supplementary Service Data. It's a technology that is used by GSM mobile phones to communicate with a certain service provider. The service provider could be offering services like mobile banking, prepaid recharge, balance inquiry, or some other services like interactive messaging, which is done directly from the user's mobile phones. USSD sessions typically involve a series of menu-driven interactions where the user will navigate through the options that are presented on their screen and they enter the corresponding numbers of the text responses. And after they do that, a request is triggered that is sent to the service provider's server, the request is processed, and a response is sent back to the user's mobile phone. This process will continue until that transaction is complete or the user decides to exit the session. A USSD application can be segmented into three parts. A user's mobile phone, the service provider, and the web application. The user will trigger a request from their mobile phone by dialing a USSD code, and that USSD code is redirected to a certain service provider. The service provider will receive the request and send it to a web application. The web application is able to interpret that kind of request and send it back to the service provider. In this scenario, the service provider will now be tasked to send a menu-driven interface back to the user's mobile phone. So if there is a transaction that is ongoing, for example, checking the bank account balance, the user will be able to receive a menu-driven interface that will enable them to achieve whatever they want to do. In this session, we are going to develop a USSD application that can enable the user to see various web frameworks that are available in the common web languages. If a user selects a certain web language, they are able to see the various frameworks within that language. Here is an example. A USSD code such as this, star, 384 star 323200. Once they dial that, a list of the web languages will appear there. If the user selects, for example, Python, that's option 2, and sends it to the service provider, you'll see the Python frameworks that are available Flask, Django, or PyTorch. So let's dive in into how this works. This is the code behind the USSD application that you've just looked at. I'll take you through the various portions of this code so that you're able to relate that to the USSD application that we are doing in this practical session. First, we have the content type. For all USSD applications, the content type is always text plain to mean every other interaction is done in a text-based format. The service provider will give you the API and from the API, you can extract the session ID, the network code, the service code, the phone number of the user who is dialing the USSD code. By default, the text is usually set to blank. That is the text variable. And if the text variable is set to blank, once a user dials the USSD code, they'll be given the default menu and it will be displayed on their phone. When the web application receives a new USSD request, the text is usually blank, and what it does, it presents to the user a default menu. In our case, the default menu will be the list of the common web languages. This is how that appears in code. You see the response that has been given from the service provider, Java, Python, PHP, and JavaScript. So if you want to see any of the frameworks within these languages, you'll have to click on or choose one of the options as your input. And what the server does, it will interpret your input and now check within the logic and provide you with the appropriate response. First, all the user inputs are stored in a text variable. And what this code does, it converts all the user inputs into an array and it will split that array and use a switch case logic or a looping structure. In the first scenario, or case one, we have Java. 
the frameworks within Java, Spring Boot, Apache Struts. I haven't listed all of them. I've just listed for the sake of this particular practical. We also have case two, that is Python. If Python is selected as our second case, all the frameworks within Python are listed. We have the third case, PHP. If PHP is selected, you'll see all the frameworks under PHP and case for JavaScript, Node.js, React.js, and TypeScript. Now we have something known as con and end. End, for end, you don't need any user input, but for con, you'll need some user input. You can go read more about con and end when it comes to the USSD applications, but that's the simplest explanation for them. For end, you don't need any other user input. Depending on what the user has selected, a response will be given, and that is the response that is fed back to the user. So for this code to run on a live server, you need to get a hosting provider to host this code for you. I've included a link of the hosting providers that you can find easily at a cheaper cost so that they are having your code hosted on a live server. The next step is to get a service provider. We are using Africa Stocking as our service provider. Once you've hosted your web application, you should have a service provider to be able to receive the USSD requests on your behalf and send it to the web application that we've just created. If it is your first time coming to this page, africastalking.com, and you do not have a user account, you can click on the login button that is on the top right, login. If you do not have an account yet, you'll click register and fill the details accordingly. Your first name, last name, email address, password, specify your country, then agree to the terms of service. But if you already have an account, either on GitHub or Google, or the account you created using your email, just click login. And now fill the details accordingly and log in. After you've logged in, this is what you'll see. And because we are using the sandbox in our application, which is free of charge, it is a test bed that can allow you to test your applications before you move them into the production environment. We'll just click go to sandbox app. There are various services that are offered by Africa Stocking. We have SMS, voice, USSD, airtime, mobile data. But for now, we are only going to focus on USSD. So select USSD. There's an option for service codes. Click on it. There's an explanation of what a service code is. A USSD service code will give you an exclusive ownership of a landing page for service requests. There are two variants of service codes. We have a dedicated service code, which is a little bit shorter, and we have a shared one, which is now a little bit longer. The sandbox will only support you with the service code after creating a channel. And a channel entails a service code, a callback, and a callback URL. What is a callback URL in our case? This is the place where you hosted your web application. For example, www.something.com. That is where your USSD code is. You can choose a channel, and a channel needs to be unique. We can just select one randomly. For example, I'll give 323200. I'll just pick one here. This is where my, my web application is hosted. I'll just click create channel. What will happen when a user dials star 384 hash 323200? The service provider will receive this request on my behalf and it will now point that request to my web application. Now, depending on the options that are there, the user will interact with my web application through my service provider. So in our case, we already have our code where if the user dials that code star 
384-32-3200. They'll be fed with whatever is there in the code. That is the list of the web languages that are there. And once a user selects one of the options, they are fed with the frameworks that are available. The good thing about Africa Stocking is that they have a simulator. A simulator is just an emulation of a mobile phone. You can also install the Africa Stocking application on your mobile phone so that you'll also receive the same interface as a simulator. But for the sake of this practical, I'll, I'm just going to use the simulator. I'll launch it. It's on the left navigation menu as the second last option. Our simulator has loaded. You only need to specify your phone number and we have a dial icon on the bottom left. Just click on it. The simulator will offer you a dial pad and in the dial pad you can now type the USSD code. Our USSD code was star 382 star 384 sorry 384 star 3232 hash run it. Good. Our USSD application is working well. So if you click or select for example PHP the language that we are using three you can see the frameworks that are there within PHP Laravel Symfony called Igniter and that's it so we've just developed a simple web application that can enable us to have the user select various inputs and they get responses depending on the inputs that they've seen in the video i've also put some links including where you can get a hosting provider service remember to also share our videos to your friends so that they can also learn you can also request them to subscribe to help us grow our learning community see you in the next video where we'll be doing a ussd application that is linked to a database